Hello and welcome to According to John. Today we're going to talk about or answer the question, what is easy believism? Yeah, that's a, a kind of a big deal in evangelical conservative circles. Seems like you have thousands and thousands of people believing in Jesus. I hope that's true. Right. I hope that's true. I don't want to be a dookie downer, but I know it's it's so simple, except he becomes a child. I understand right. that. Got all that. Yeah. And it's so simple. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Now that's from the heart. Right. Uh, shall be saved. But here's the thing that troubles us. That's why Johnny's doing this con- podcast. When we believe, it's, something happens. It's a changed life. Every uh, therefore, if anybody really be in Christ, <laughs> that's the key. A new creature. He's a new creature. Old new things creation. are passed away, and all, all things, things are become new. And yeah. when you see somebody. I believe in Jesus, but there's been no change. Mm-hmm. We have some biblical problems we have to get through. We and the do. problem is not with the word of God. Right. <laughs> Never <laughs> is. Hey, I am your host, John Westfall. This is my co-host, Pastor Duke Herget, the Duke Meister. And we're going to talk about what is easy believism, because I think it is more rampant than most can imagine yeah and and i think it's because a lot of people are in hopes yeah that it's real or in hopes of going to heaven they just haven't gotten out of their own way yet (sighs) yeah well the bible makes clear that there will be those who say they believe Mm -hmm. but they don't show that they believe well even all through scripture we see clearly and we're going to see in some of this that um jesus says uh, that you will serve me, you will work, you will do. Like there's going to be clear evidence that you are a child of mine. And with some people, it's just not there. Yeah, the closing on the Sermon of the Mount, often people say it's probably the greatest sermon ever preached by Jesus. That would and, be why it's the greatest. Yep. <laughs> he closed out with this topic. Mm. He said, Jesus, who died for our sins, who loves us. Jesus said, not everybody who saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of God, but he that doeth the will of the Father. Now, we know very clearly from Scripture, we are not saved by doing good works. Right. We know that. That's a that's clear as a bell. But when people say they believe, it so requires a change. That's Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Not the religious, not... People have such a... Spirituality. (laughs) I don't want to get Johnny going, but I may be already past that. (laughs) that, I pushed that button. I am... Hey, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Yeah, that's, we need that. And then we're going to get started. I will pray, brother. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you. Father, we pray your hand upon this podcast on this hour that we look into EV, easy believism. Father, help us to speak clearly and boldly. And Father, help our listeners to hear clearly. And Lord, that we just bring you honor and glory through a changed life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, so not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father, and that was my point earlier. There's so many people, they say they love Jesus, but they never do the will of the Father. They don't They don't even show up for church, but they love Jesus, mm-hmm. or they believe in Jesus. Jesus said, if you love me, what? Keep. Keep my commandments. Yeah, that, that's what he said. John, John 14, 6, and they're not even doing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it kind of, it it just drives me insane. But easy believism is the view that one needs only to believe in Jesus in order to be saved. That can be so confusing. It's that right close. It's like right there. (sighs) But the real faith really does change people. Well, because they take it, well, I believe Jesus, and what happens is that there's, they don't see the need for a committed life 
of a Christian and uh, we don't need to be discipled. There's no discipleship process. There's no proof of salvation, but I believe, but Satan, the demons, they all say. They believe and yeah. tremble. Yeah. But they don't repent. Right. And so the true, well, let me go back to the first thought I had, you know, as you introduced right. this topic to me. Because real quick, true faith in Christ will always lead to repentance. Always. Always. And, and repentance always leads to a changed life. Yeah. Go ahead. So when we talk about easy believism, I remember when I first heard the gospel, I thought, that's too easy. <laughs> Just praying. But you see, it's praying, believing, mm. repenting, which means turning to Jesus with everything from my heart. Yep. Yep. I, I, I It's just believing. You know, that right. thief on the cross, I mean, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom, a simple prayer, but it was from his heart. Right. And, and he said, said today yeah. you will be with me. In paradise. He believed he passed from death unto life. He yeah. was saved. He was born again. Yes. He believed. That's how simple it is. But you have people come along and they everything that God does, people pervert it. Right. <laughs> this is a perversion of it. And it I remember, really is. Because what they do is they take this and to a degree I'm guilty of this. Pray a prayer. Now what I say is if you believe Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, that he came and he's the only way to heaven. He died on the cross for your sins. And you believe he was resurrected on the third day and is at the right hand of the Father. You believe that. You're putting your faith in Jesus. If that's your desire, then pray this prayer. Understanding the prayer doesn't save you. The prayer is just a roadmap that guides you through the process so that you have a time stamp that yeah. you made a conscious on purpose decision with all of your heart to believe unto Jesus. That's what I say every time I do that. Because the we don't want to be guilty of preaching and easy believism. <laughs> easy believism. <laughs> I want to know that people are genuine in, right. in their doing. Right. I don't want them to be just overwhelmed with, Oh, I heard your message. It's so beautiful. I love you, Pastor Duke. Oh, what do I, and say, just say, okay, I'll say a prayer. And they have no clue what they're doing right. just because they're moved emotionally. We well, don't want to be guilty of that. That, that goes along with the seed planted in the thorns and the thickets on the path yeah. and the fertile ground on the rocks. That, that emotionalism. Yeah, right? I don't want to be guilty of easy believism and, and teaching something that's not true. I don't want to be cheap with the gospel. Right. But it is simple. Right. But it's, it, it's when it's genuine simplicity right. from a repented heart who believes, who repents, right. who turns to Jesus and calls on his name and believes. Boom, that's the right. real deal. And you see real conviction There's the of evidence. sin. There's... If there's, there's no the evidence. evidence, there's no decision. Yeah. It can't be, guys, because all through Scripture, all th these people who say, I tried church, it's not for me, or I tried Jesus, it's not for me, or uh, there was an interview the other day with, uh, as a matter of fact, you did a podcast on mm -hmm. PastorDuke.com. You need to go to that podcast or go to Pastor Duke on any, any podcast platform. But you guys did episode two on Calvinism exposed Megan something a granddaughter of the pastor of the Westboro Baptist Church which was crazy uh, they were lunatics absolute lunatics so she grew up in that right. church it was crazy legalistic. she grew up with lunacy <laughs> attacked it was it was ungodly you can right. google that a lot of a long time Chris you know about Westboro Baptist so she grew up there and she was really confused on Calvinism that God predestinated people to hell, which I don't believe that. And torture and, and torture. everything. Oh, yeah. It's like, and she said this. She said, that, this, that's why I'm not a Christian anymore. Okay, let me help you. You were never a Christian. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't mean that insultingly, but you, if you are a true born-again believer in Christ, you know that will never go away. Mm -hmm. It can't. It's physically yeah. impossible. She was such a sweet spirited gal. She was, man. And sincere. Yeah. And she was intelligent. Yeah. Yeah. And she took unbiblical teaching right. that she received. It made no sense right. to her. And the crazy thing right. is, 
she's on the right side of this thing theologically and right. doesn't even understand right. it. She doesn't understand it. And the worst part is she was on the biggest platform. Yeah, Joe Rogan. In America. Joe 20 million Rogan. people heard her. So yeah. sad. Yeah, very sad. So sad. Anyway, easy believism is they pray a prayer. There's no real conviction, no turning of life. And so there's no real faith in Christ because praying a prayer, that's the easy belief. Like, oh, yeah, I believe in Jesus. And, and I've talked to people. Uh, I'll ask them, uh, do you believe in Jesus? Oh, yeah. So you're going to heaven? Yeah. Why? That's okay. And they draw the blind. Yeah, like, like they just, because I'm a good person. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's because yeah. they didn't get it. Yeah, they didn't get it. Yeah. Or ask them, do you believe? All the Bible is true, and it's the Word of God without error, without fail. And then all of a sudden they're like, well, you can't believe all of that. Immediately you know they're not saved. Yeah. We're John, not, uh, 8, John 8, 47 says that. Yeah. The last thing Pastor John and I ever want to do is judge somebody. Right. But Jesus said, by their fruits yeah. you will know them. This isn't a matter of judgment. This is a matter of discernment. Right. I'd like to go back. Uh, it's probably the ninth late in the seventies, even in the mid late seventies, there was a, a, a movement. I think it was a faction among fundamentalism where uh, certain few pastors were very prominent and they turned out to be uh, thieves and adulterers, mm -hmm. but they made a huge splash. Their names were in fundamental lights coming to their conference, come see them. And they were having thousands and thousands of people saved, but hardly anybody baptized. Right. Their churches weren't filling up. There was a church in the Albany area that adopted this. They go out and follow the little remedy, the little way, it's the little thing the church set them up to do. They'd go up and down the streets of Albany for about two hours on a certain night of the week. They'd come back to the church and say, we led 250 people to yeah. Christ. And we had, you know, this one church had over 4,000 people saved, and the church was running like 60 people. Right. And you see, folks, that is a false doctrine. Right. I, I don't call that uh, true conversions. I think I call those spiritual abortions. Right. They just went to people on the street. Do you believe you? Is, is, do you believe in a place called heaven? Yeah. Do you, would you like to go there someday? Yeah. Well, if in order to go to heaven, you have to ha have Jesus in your heart. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Yep. Uh, well, they wouldn't even say that if you just pray this. Just pray this prayer. Yeah. Uh, Lord, I'm a sinner. Yeah. Forgive me of my sins. Come to my heart in Jesus' name. Amen. Now you're a Christian. Whoa, 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 so whoa, I think whoa. there's a, a friend of mine, uh, and and because I want to be very sensitive to this, I'm not. I'll just leave it at that. At any rate, that's exactly what happened to him. He lives here in the Albany region, uh, capital district, and one of those style of churches, right? Went and just kept bombarding him with. This, and, and finally, he prays the prayer. To get him off his back. Yeah, he, he that's what happened. He prayed the prayer. And guess how many times that pastor came back to see how he was doing? Probably zero. Zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he prayed the prayer. Yeah. Oh, I prayed the prayer. That, <laughs> there's so much danger in that. Yeah. It's, it's heartbreaking, honestly. Yeah, I had a, a, a experience in my pastor in the early days. A fellow came to my church. Norm Valuvi became one of my giant one of my strongest men. He's still serving the Lord today with all his heart. His kids all got saved. They're all serving. This is one of the trophies of grace. So he's in his early 20s. He's a hippie, long hair, pot smoking <laughs> and all this. And uh, he's in marriage and it's not going well. <laughs> and uh, his in-laws got saved and they witnessed to him. And uh, they, I mean, they be, they went on to become missionaries. They were some of the most wow, godly they're sold out. people. Yeah, Mr. and Mrs. Wallace, do you remember me? Oh, yeah, Bible? yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this is their son-in-law. And so he's hearing the gospel. He wants nothing to do it because, you know, he wants to get high <laughs> and live that whole lifestyle. But he's trying to get his in-laws off his back. So he's at the Mohawk Mall out in Schenectady. It's not even a mall anymore, but it was in those days. And he's out there. And it, this this group of, of young people came from one of those kind of churches, 
you know, they were running around the mall giving gospel tracts, which I think is really cool. But he told me the story. This really attractive girl came and she gave me a track. He knew what it was because of his in laws. Right. <laughs> you believe you believe in God, right? He was Catholic. Of course he believes in God. You believe Jesus and Jesus Yeah. And so if you just call on his name and so he told me like four times how pretty this girl was and she gave him a track and, and, and she said, well, just read that. We'll read this prayer on the back of the track and you'll go to heaven. So I said, okay. And she held his hand. He liked that. And, <laughs> and, uh, and she read the prayer and, and she said, did you say that prayer too? He said, yep. She, she said, okay, you're on your way to heaven. Yeah. So he thought he was saved. While well, he's, you know, rolling joints right, and getting right. high. No conviction. And no, no life change. And right. now in the meantime, his wife came right. to know Jesus. Mm-hmm. She went on to be our uh, church secretary and, again, one of the most godly people I've ever known. And um, so now his wife is saved, his in-laws are saved, and everybody's getting saved around the Wallaces but him. Right. So mm-hmm. I came to his house. Uh-huh. And uh, he kind of related to me because I came out of the stuff he's still in. Right, right, yeah. And yeah. I said, uh, I taught him this lesson that you can say the prayer right. and go to hell right. because the real prayer from a real heart will really change everything. But you know, if you listen to these TV evangelists, you listen to, to Joyce Meyer, you listen to Joel Osteen. I only use them because they're big names and easy to find. And then they all do it. They Joel Osteen will stand there and he will say, or Osteen, not Osteen, Osteen. And he will say, if you pray this prayer and then he says it, and then when he's done, he's like, if you prayed that, we believe that you received Jesus. And now you're a part of the family. Mm-hmm. And, and I hope like, I hope some people really do get it, but I, I'm going back to Norm now. Right, right. He was lost. He yeah. was and living. Not, lost. By the way, I'm not saying nobody's ever gotten saved under Joe Osteen, but if there's no change, yeah, if it's just saying that prayer with a big smile, <laughs> if there's not a change, if there's not repentance, I'm sorry, Joel. You're popular. You make a lot of money. Your wife's pretty, and all that. <laughs> I know that none of that gets but, you to heaven. Yeah. yeah, but if if the lives are not changing, you're right. preaching something to give people a false hope. That girl might have meant well at the mall that night. Right. She told a guy who's on his way to hell that he's on her way to right. heaven because he said a prayer. Right. That is easy believism. And so Norm was a little uncomfortable with me, and I walked him through. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. All things have become new. I said, what is new in your life? Uh, well, yeah, I know, um, right? nothing. Nothing. And I said, so you are basing your salvation, heaven or hell, upon a very attractive girl that held your hand and read a prayer, and, and you prayed it too, with yep. no change. I said, yep. I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. And the Holy Spirit convicted him of his sin, and he goes, the scriptures are right, and right. I'm wrong. I really need Jesus. That was a Thursday night. Sunday morning, his wife, uh, the child was sick. She had to stand with the child, and he came to church all by himself. Wow. He didn't even want to go with her, but she was dragging him to church. <laughs> now he's under conviction. Right. She can't come to church because the kid's sick. He comes by himself. I gave the invitation that day. He was he ran down that aisle. Yeah. And Catholics up up here when they go forward to take communion, they'll fold their hands like this. Or he was, so he was coming down the aisle like the Catholic boy that he was. <laughs> he hit the altar weeping, and he had his hands like perfectly pointed to heaven, praying, and he got saved before I got there. I went to lead him to the Lord. It was too late. He already when he ran committed. up there, dude. That's when. And guess what? Everything changed. changed. Everything. That's the difference. Yeah. Well, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. It's, you you can't do this. You can't earn the points. You can't make the money. You can't be good enough. You can't do good enough things to get to heaven. It is by or through faith. Uh, by, um, by grace. By through grace faith. through faith. Yeah. So uh, then... In James 2.20, James talks about the evidence of good works. So now you're saved. Let me read 2.20. It says, but do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Because many people believe in good works, but what James is saying is 
if you want to know what I believe, which was, was a question prior to that or a statement prior. And then James said, listen, if you want to know what I believe, watch what I do. Because what you do shows what you believe, shows who you believe in, shows what who your you God really is. Are. So James says, watch what I do because it's in my works you're going to see my love for Jesus. I'll show you my faith by my works. By it my works. is so yeah. simple. Yeah. I remember when I told my mom I got saved and she's looking at me like, what do you mean? I'm the one that cleans your room. Right. What do you mean you're saved? Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm the I'm the Sunday school teacher around here. You're the drunk. You're the right. pothead. You know, right. you're saved because you said a prayer. Yeah. My and she didn't get it. She was a little angry. Mm-hmm. She's a little bit ticked off. We got enough yeah. problems around here without you re- dragging religion into it. I right. said, Mom, Mom, it's not religion. It. I have Jesus in my heart. Yeah, yeah. You just say a prayer, and all of a sudden you go to heaven. She was a little ticked off at me. Right. But within a few months. She knew because she saw happened. the difference. Here's what she said. She said, I saw you completely change. Yep. She said, you used to bully your little brothers. Now they knew I loved them and I never really physically hurt them, right. but I called them terrible names. <laughs> you dumb idiot. You stupid knucklehead. And that's what you can say on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I was terrible to those guys, but you know, but when I got saved, the Holy Spirit told me to shut up. Right. I love my brothers. And so I started to say, instead of calling them names, I said, you know, God loves you guys, man. And, right. you know, I'm, it's really an honor for me to be your big brother. Well, here's the thing, though, Duke, and this is what people hate. And when I say hate, I literally mean hate. Because they're like, oh, you're better than us. And then they, they think we create the divide. But we don't create the divide. I never for one second thought I was better than anybody ever. But I was accused that. Oh, goody, goody, two yeah, shoes yeah, now. Yeah. But you know what? Jesus creates the divide. Yeah, he does. He does. Listen, there's two types of people, believers, non-believers. Born mm-hmm. again, not born again. Check this out. John 3.36, which is not too far after for God so loved the world. <laughs> But then here he says, he who believes in the son has everlasting life. And he who does not believe the son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. How about Romans 6, 17 through 18? But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart. That's the key from the heart. From the heart. That, (coughs) excuse me that form of doctrine to which you were delivered and having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. And so again, we see two types of people. Second Corinthians five seventeen. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. If you're not in Christ, nothing has changed. You're still on your way to hell. How about Galatians five eighteen through 24? But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So then in 22 it says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness of self-control against such. There's no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Those who are of Christ have crucified all of this and put it away. If you're still practicing this, you're not of God. Listen, you, I, <laughs> Jesus catches his, he, when he catches fish, he cleans them. He Amen. catches them and cleans them. Right. And yeah. I can go on and on and on and on with passages that clearly point out the saved and the unsaved. And here's the reality. If you, if you receive Christ as you, or you pray the prayer, the magic prayer, the magic words, mm-hmm. and nothing in your life changes, nothing to be more righteous and more holy, 
to clarify the change in case the weather changes. <laughs> but nothing in your life inside inside of you becomes more righteous and more holy. You didn't get saved. I remember when I got saved, I'm thinking, is that it? I called on the Lord and I was waiting for like whistles and bells and sirens and lights flashing and I didn't. I just got on my knees. A guy showed me, I remember, showed me the verse Romans 10, 13, a number of verses. And then I prayed that we call the sinner's prayer. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. Come into my heart and save me. And I'm like, yes, save me, Lord, save me. And, but I was waiting for some kind of a buzz. I didn't get it. And he was so wise. And he said, what did God say? And I, he said, read that verse back to me. And I read it. And he says, is God a liar? Well, no. He says, God made you a promise. He said, what's that? I said, he gave me, he gives me eternal life. Mm -hmm. He said, so are you saved? I felt so awkward. He, uh, well, uh, he goes, no, he said, not uh, how do you, he didn't say, I ask you, how do you feel? He said, according to the scripture, did you call on the Lord? Yes. And according to the Lord, God's talking to you, man, listen to him. Are you saved? Mm -hmm. According to that verse, I am saved. It felt so awkward. Right, right. To, I, you know, but a, what happened to your walk when you got done? Well, that was it. That was it. This is where the goodies are. Yeah. Right? So I was thinking, well, I, I did that. It seemed so simple, easy. Mm-hmm. Yep. But it was real believism is easy. Because it, it doesn't take long before you have a conversation that you realize. So. Here's go. I get, I'm thinking, is that all there is? I, right? I called on the Lord and I, right. I, 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 I turned to him. Yes. I, I was like, I don't, I'm done with drugs. I, I need yeah. help. I need help Lord. But I was broke. So I run, I go down to the park where I hang out and my friend Benji Banks gets out. Uh, he pulls in, he's got a new water pipe or something. I run over and I started witnessing to him. I did not even know what the word witness means. Right. But you started telling him you got saved. I did. Yeah. I said, Benji, you got to come up. I went to church, man. Yeah. I heard you're going to church. That's too bad. But no, it's not too bad. It's too good. Uh-huh. I had told Jeannie on Thursday night, sitting in the same park, I'll never be a fanatic like you are and go around and tell everybody about God. <laughs> and so what am are. I doing? <laughs> I've been saved now about 20 minutes. And I'm witnessing, not even yeah. know what it means because Christ came in mm-hmm. a new, everything changes. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to hell, but Benji is, I don't want him to go to hell cause I love him. Mm-hmm. So I witnessed him. He wasn't too happy to hear about it, but I, I couldn't keep it in. And that's yeah. when I had my little buzz like, Whoa, Thursday night, I said, I'd never do this. And now I'm doing it. Right. And I realized <laughs> something happened inside. And then immediately I went home, you know, I started being nice to my brothers. Right. And mom's like, she was mad at me when I said I'm saved, <laughs> right. but she was happy for me when I was nice to my brothers. Right. Right. And, and she said, you became very helpful around the house. She said, you just ignored you know, my mom was right. single mom now and, right. she, and she needed help. And she said, you just ignored it. You just lived for yourself and went to your parties. And, and, now, and now I say, mom, is there anything you, for me, you need me to do? I wasn't like, well, I'm religious. What can I, I didn't even think about it. It's just Jesus in me yep. being nice to people. Not because there's some kind of religious rule at the Baptist church that said, you have to do this right. and you can't do that. <laughs> I didn't need a verse to tell me not to get high. I just knew that was wrong. It just happens. Yeah, I, I'm it, telling you, I was the same way. All my drugs, alcohol, everything. Look what, look what Romans 8, 5 through 8 says. Uh, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. That's why everything changed for you. Yeah, you know, my norm's like, I want to stay high, man. I want to get high. He said he was a Christian. He was, I say, dude, you, you have, you're lost, man. <laughs> and now his in-laws told him that he got mad at him, but that hippie preacher told him. He listened. He listened. They had prayed for him. Yeah. He listened, and then that yeah. guy got saved. So check verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Eternal life. Right there and you go. that peace that passes all understanding. Verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God or war against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot mm-hmm. please God. Yeah. Cannot. And so... If you just easy believism and you just prayed a prayer, but you didn't get saved because nothing in your life changed, you you're still not pleasing God. You're still lost. You're still dying and going to hell when it's done, when it's done. And I, and I don't, I'm not trying to, uh, uh, 
punch people in the face with that. That's just the reality of it. Well, one of the heartbreaks that I have is a 45 year pastor. I'm, I'm came to New York and I have lots of blessings and lots of people got saved and thrilled and uh, yes, yes, yes. Buildings and people and missionaries and churches planted, but there were kids that grew up in my church, went to my Sunday school, went to our camps. They were great kids. But today, there's no evidence that they know Jesus. Right. Well, so check this out. 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Paul asked the question that I think is really actually amazing. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Examine yourselves. We're telling you how to examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. What do you test yourselves with? Scripture, not other people. And then he asked this question. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? If, if you don't know, then you're not. If you are what you were, then you ain't. All that good, bad grammar, good theology, right? And then he, say, he finishes with this. Unless indeed you are disqualified. You better examine yourself. James 2.19. You believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. Trouble. People get lost. They're like, oh, I'm saved, but nothing changes. If nothing changes, you're not saved. With true salvation comes a genuine repentance. Second Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. I read this earlier. We're reading it again. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. That'll never change. It, it'll never change. If, if nothing new comes to you in, in righteousness and holiness, you didn't repent. Here's an example of that. I had a soul in a set of encyclopedias from our public high school because, you know, why not? It's not because you're reading them. <laughs> no, not, and they're, in, they're in my closet. Okay, my mom, I don't know, she never said anything about it, but I got a whole set of world book encyclopedias. I didn't steal the old ones Most either, people brother. people don't even know what I, that is. Yeah, the young people wouldn't know what encyclopedias are, but that, that's, that's the old Stack days, internet. Books. It was the internet <laughs> yeah, of our yeah, era. Printed internet. Yes, yeah, you had to go to the library, pull out the book, and look it up. So I have a, I, I, I got the new ones. I stole the new ones. They're sitting in my closet, and I, I got saved. Right. Now, Jesus is inside of me. I open up my closet door. And I see the set of encyclopedias that I stole from school. <laughs> and guess what Jesus inside of me said? You better take them back. That's, how did you know? <laughs> That's exactly what he told me. And I saw him, and I didn't do it immediately. Because yeah, you're like, oh, they're, oh, gonna, they're, no, they're heavy, man. It, right? It's yeah, like, they were heavy. They, they were, were very heavy. They, <laughs> I think they weighed about 75 pounds. Or you know? more. There was about 40 volumes. You know, oh. And they were some of them big, thick yeah. books. And they were big yeah. books. And the Holy Spirit inside of me now said, take them back. Yep. So I couldn't carry My brother said, I'm not taking them back. So I took half of them back to the <laughs> library the one day. So I could carry I, I, I put them on the, sh the, the, the counter there. And the librarian was also my neighbor. She said, what are you doing? I said, I'm returning these encyclopedias I stole when I was in, uh, last year from school. I said, I've become a Christian and I'm studying for the ministry. And uh -huh. I feel like God wants me to return these. And I feel she, like God wants me to be holy now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And she's like, I, I can't believe this. I said, I'll bring back the rest tomorrow. And I said, if I need to pay a penalty, a fine, go to jail, whatever. You got right. my address. I'm sorry. I repent. So the next I brought, so anyway, she was all excited about it. Cause they heard that Duke became a Christian. He's going to be they're a seeing evidence and they're seeing evidence of it. So it was really cool. She went down to the teacher's lounge before the school. Good deed of the day. Duke Hargett. He, he's for real. He's going to be a minister. He just returned a half a set of encyclopedias. <laughs> he stole. And, and then the teachers heard it. They, th they all knew me. They thought that was pretty cool. And the principal was there. He heard it. So, you know, five minutes in, they gives their morning announcements. Yeah. Good deed of the day. Duke Hargett. Target, uh, <laughs> former drug dealer, returned a set of encyclopedias that he stole. And the kids went home and told their parents. My mom got 10 phone calls that night from 
from people in the community that hated me That's funny. because they knew my lifestyle. Yep. And now they're like, oh, we're yep. so happy for your son. I hear he's going to be in the ministry. And, he, and my mom didn't know. Oh, th- th- that's what those encyclopedias <laughs> were. So my mom's like, thank you for returning them. But you see, Jesus overturns the apple cart. Right. He changes things. And it's fun to be a repenter. Yeah. It's a yeah. Bl- and then later that year, I went down to apologize to the principal for being such a jerk. And he, he shut me down. He said, stop it. I'm, I thought he was going to throw me out. I thought he didn't want to hear it. I, and he got out his pad and he goes, I said, you don't want me to, I said, I don't mean to offend you. He goes, right, offend right. me. He goes, no. He goes, I want you to tell this story to the whole school. He booked me I, and I preached my first sermon <laughs> at my public high school in Ohio. He said, I want yeah. you to come and tell your story to the whole school. Yeah. So you see, being a Christian can be exciting. It is. And, you know, repent. Get on God's side of things against you. I'm, I'm Listen, all fired I, up, I've lived, I've lived on both sides. I'll take this side every day of the week. Yeah. Every day of the week. And you get people, well, I don't see anything wrong yeah. with it. Right. Well, if they, you know, no, no, let's have our eyes on Jesus. And the, and he speaks to us. Let's listen. That's how I know I'm saved because right. something happened on the inside. I want to be right with God. Well, it is not possible to get saved and remain the same. Yeah. It is not. Salva- and, and here's the other thing. Salvation is free. But it cost us everything discipleship it's discipleship. we were at the we were at panera's after church sunday and we were running all over and seeing grandkids and do this and that we stopped at panera's and they didn't put our pastry on the ticket so my wife's because she checks the ticket make sure we're not getting overcharged right, right, right. well this time we got undercharged and immediately guess what she did yeah uh you she went right back yeah you forgot the bill of yeah well, here's our here's our pastry and you didn't bill us for it they were like, wow. I know. And the manager came out and he goes, he said, you just made our day. Mm-hmm. He said, just, you can have it for free. Yeah. They were, and they were blessed and we were blessed. Yeah. If you're honest, most of the time they're, they're like, wow, just, but what makes that Jesus, you know, before I was saved, you know, what would have happened? Yeah. You'd have walked out without paying any of yeah. the bill. <laughs> hey, their mistake. That's their fault. They're so stupid. I'll take that free pastry. <laughs> Yeah. So listen, we are to die to ourselves yeah. and dying to ourselves means we repent. We live for Christ. We try to be holy. We, we represent God in all of his fullness. Well, go back to what you just said. I love that. Try to be holy without even really thinking about right. it. I don't think about like, I want to be holy. It's just in the moment, this is the right, right. thing to do right. and you want to do it. And the Holy Spirit's very clear. Yeah. And here's something I, I don't want to do that. That's, that's sinful. I don't, right. And and so this whole thing can be really simple. Right. Well, and that's the thing, right? Listen, easy believism fails in recognizing that a person with faith in Jesus Christ leads to a progressively changed life. And that's what happens. Like when I first got saved, I got rid of all the drugs, all the alcohol. Mm-hmm. I remember my brother crying when they dumped my last bag of dope <laughs> down the toilet, followed by a chaser with a bottle of Jack Daniels, and he yeah. cried, give it to me, give it to me. He's like, no. But, you know. A few years later, he flushed. He did the same flush. Thank you, Lord. So, it, but it took me two years, three years to quit smoking. You know? Now, I still have a, I'll have a cigar every now and then if I'm just out on a motorcycle ride or just cause you're a guy. Yeah. I just, every now and then I just like a cigar. You I know? got a couple of cigar stories, but I'll stay with the text. Stay here. with the text. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> hang out with him. So that's my problem. <laughs> so, but, but as far as smoking, no, why? Because I, and you know what caused me to give it up? I got a letter in the mail and the church said, you've been, uh, selected to be a trustee deacon a deacon or a trustee and said but here's a qualification and on it said uh uh no smoking Mm -hmm. and i and so i i sent it back to them actually i took it and put it in the in the office i took it to the office and said uh i can't do i can't be a trustee because i smoke here (laughs) and walked out and God smote me. <laughs> I couldn't smoke in Your body is my temple. Stop polluting it, dude. So I called the church and 
and uh, or I went back into the church after I repented and said I quit smoking. If you guys know. <laughs> Johnny, is there anything that feels better and is more exciting and more fun than repenting? No. That's what because repentance brings joy. Well, and it because fe it feels like it lifts a massive weight off of you yeah, and you yeah. can actually breathe. Yeah, did you know Dr. R. O. Woodworth from teach one of the, I, I think I never had, had him, him. Yeah, I but had him. I know who he is. Yeah, Dr. R. Woodworth, one of the teachers at our school, one of the old timers, and he said, Smoking never sent anybody to hell. It just makes them smell like they've We've already been, been, been there. there. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, guys, I just want you to know that when it comes to easy believism, it doesn't exist. It's a lie from the pit of hell. If you give your life to Jesus Christ, you will, you will be different. And immediately you will recognize that you are different. And then progressively you will understand how. But if there's no change in you and there's no change in anyone that claims that they have been saved, they have not been saved. It's easy believism. A prayer doesn't get you to heaven. It is repentance and your faith in Jesus Christ that does. I pray that you make that decision to give your life to Jesus Christ. I summarize it with this phrase, so close, but so far away. So far away. Hey, guys, if this podcast has helped you, please like, share, subscribe, and follow. And until next time, God bless.